Hey everyone, welcome back to Contractor Evolution. I am your host, Benji Carlson. I'll be joined by my co-host, Igor, in a minute here. Um, being the boss is hard, right? I want to lay out a scenario that I think a lot of you bosses will find relatable. Um, as your business grows, you hire people to fulfill certain functions that your business needs. An office manager gets brought in to help you manage the, the administrative load. Um, or you add some new crew members in the field to beef up your production capacity. Maybe you bring on an estimator so that you're not crunching numbers late into the evening. Uh, probably pretty soon after that, you'll need a team of project managers to run the day-to-day -day for you, right? The organism that is your business is evolving. And while that's an exciting feeling, it also brings about a certain feeling, a certain uncertainty that you're probably familiar with, right? Here's some questions you might be asking yourself. Are my people doing what I hired them, what I pay them to do? Are they an ROI generating asset for my business or are they just an expense? Um, are they executing at the level that I was back when I did their job and probably a million others too? Um, or are they just a costly piece of dead weight? When your business was small and simple, this question was pretty easy to answer for yourself, right? Think about it. If you hired a laborer to work alongside you, you could see with your own two eyes, hey, you know what? This person is completely fucking the dog. There's the door. Bye. Uh, but as your company evolves, roles become more complex and nuanced. Layers get added to the organizational chart. And truly knowing, truly seeing how your people are performing, uh, that becomes a lot less clear. And thinking that every person you hire is going to fulfill their job description flawlessly for as long as they work for you is also totally naive. I don't think any of you are that delusional. <laughs> but while human capital is the most important asset our business has, it's fundamentally in our nature to let standards slip, to make small mistakes, to forget stuff to miss the mark, to err is human. So the question becomes, how do we as leaders manage at scale? How do we make sure individual team members are executing on their individual goals so that we as a company hit ours? The answer is a tool called goal setting and review or GSR for short. You'll, you'll hear us refer to it as that a lot in today's episode. And a GSR meeting is a rhythmical one-on-one -on -one meeting done between you and your direct reports that allows you to see black and white whether or not they are moving towards their annual deliverables to the company. And if they're not, you'll be able to see what needs to happen to course correct with them. To give us an inside look at how this leadership tool can deliver kick-ass results, we have on the show today, Dave Stevens. Dave's company, Lita Homes, is an eight-figure custom home builder and high-end renovation contractor. And he runs a very tight ship of 24. Um, and specifically in today's show, we're gonna learn how he uses GSR to lead his five project managers to create um, not only just award-winning homes, but award-winning customer experiences. His track record, is immaculate. For the last three years, he's won the Canadian Home Builders Association's Builder of the Year Award. And then over the last two, he's received the highest level of customer satisfaction award in his Vancouver Island region. Um, and he's also about to become the president of the CHBA too. Uh, Dave directly attributes this success and recognition to the, to the way he leads his team through GSR. Um, to put it simply, his people do their jobs extremely well. In today's episode, Dave shares how GSR allowed him to objectively see for the first time how his project managers were actually performing uh, and how he could support them best. He talks about how he uses a rigorous tracking system and then this ingenious point system to incentivize his people uh, to perform the high standards that they in fact set for themselves. And then lastly, this is my favorite, um, he tells us how he approaches those nerve wracking accountability conversations, right? That you avoid like the plague, but deep down you really know that you should have. Um, lastly, I'll say this, there is a downloadable template, a downloadable GSR template. There's two of them, uh, in the description of this episode. So if you want to download that, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It will lay out the actual dashboards that, that he uses. Um, this conversation will make a ton more sense and it's something that you can use in your at-home business totally for free. Um, and it's our way of saying, thanks for listening. So I hope you really enjoy this conversation with Dave Stevens. 
You're listening to Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. If you're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability, you've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school, and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Dave, welcome to the Contractor Evolution Show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's great to have you. Benji. Thank you for doing this, man. i um, really excited. I want to start the conversation here. So think back to uh, a time before you were doing these goal setting and review meetings. Uh, what was holding accountability like within your organization prior to implementing these? Well, uh, I think in reality, and unfortunately, it was like living in like a pie in the sky, it was a hit and miss, because you can't, of course, hit any targets that you don't even know exist. So, you know, I mean, I would have the conversation, but I didn't have anything to, to measure it against. So you can't manage what you, you know, you can't measure what you're not able to manage. Or I can't exactly remember how that goes. But anyways, the bottom line is, is that it, it was very hit and miss and it was uh, pie in the sky and uh, I didn't have any real meaningful measurables or data to, to compare against. So you're not really, you're not having apples to apples conversations with people. They're saying one thing happened, you're seeing another thing in the results. And it's just like, it's, it's very blurry. It's very gray. It's, it's not black and white. Yeah, and that was an absolute issue uh, for me, and it's it's actually very much uh, against my my nature. I liked p- the picture to be very clear, and I was really struggling with uh, how do I make that picture clear, and and how do I help my team understand exactly what it is that uh, that I'm actually expecting from them, and the, the GSRs have been without a shadow of a doubt an absolute game changer for us in relation to setting expectations. Uh, everyone understanding their deliverables, roles and responsibilities, mm-hmm. and uh, quite frankly, uh, managing pro- uh, projects uh, to, a, to a high level and to, to a standard that our clients have come to expect. Yeah. Okay. So I think before I, I, we're going to get sort of deeper into your process, your dashboards, I think there's a really cool point system you'd mentioned that I want to hear about, but, um, Igor, maybe just like, let's, let's for, for listeners, like, let's get totally on the same page about what a goal setting and review meeting is. Why do we do them? Who might we do them with? How often? Like, let's just kind of paint a bit of a picture. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think of GSNR goal setting as a leadership tool. It's kind of the, one of these things that, that sits inside of my leadership tool belt that I've leaned on and relied on for a long period of time. And essentially what it is, it's, it's a ritualistic weekly, typically, sometimes biweekly, but with most roles, weekly meeting. It's recurring, same time of the week. And it's a time where with every direct report of mine, we have, we have this space where we're reviewing uh, last week's goals and, and very specific goals. Um, and so how, where did they actually come in against what they said that they were going to do, the goals that we set? And then we look at the upcoming week and say, what are the goals for, for this coming week? So it's a leadership tool that allows you to, one, to hold accountability, mm-hmm. but also to work and support the individual that you're leading to help them achieve a very focused goal in the coming week. So a couple important notes, I think, to, to mention a bit about this. Um, one, to do effective GSNRs, you have to actually have a roadmap uh, for like the broader picture, whether it's a year or a quarter, because you can't really set weekly goals unless you know where you're headed, mm-hmm. right? So if that project manager needs to produce, let's say, $4 million dollars in, in revenue over the course of a year, or two million or whatever it is, you need to be able to have that goal so that you can break it down to the 52 weeks of the year to understand roughly what needs to happen every week. Mm. Because the one fun, I think one foundational element to these is that the goals have to be specific. They have to be measurable, right? So these aren't very loose goals like right like have a strong week in production isn't a goal. Do my absolute best on the job site. Exactly. (laughs) These are specific. You hit it or you didn't hit it. You hit it or you didn't hit it. Exactly. And so you have to kind of be able to understand the broader plan so that you can set effective goals and, and, and teach 
the people that you're leading to set effective goals and then measure against them. So to Dave's point, you can't, you really, you're not going to be able to hold performance if you can't really measure it effectively, right? Yeah. So um, that's kind of what, what GSNR is. It's a rhythmical weekly meeting. It's where you're looking at it, and it's not a ton of goals. It's typically two goals, just a primary and a secondary, like the most important thing from last week right. and the secondary thing from last week and then setting them moving forward. And in my experience, one of the things that both leaders and their subordinates really will struggle with is to identify what is a primary goal, what is worth a primary goal. I think that's one of the biggest topics of discussion in most GSNR meetings is like of all the things that we you could, could do. be focused yeah. on. What what's should, the highest priority? What's the highest priority? And, and, and that's, in my experience, one of the biggest differentiating factors between strong leaders and the rest is that strong leaders are able to discern amongst all the stuff going on and all the balls flying through the air, what is the one most important one? And then, and then laser point this person that they're leading towards that. Um, can I ask you like, cause I, I think a lot of people might be listening and they go, well, no, I, I do those. I do these like check-ins on the job site or every once in a while I'll like, you know, ha have a guy in my truck yeah. and we'll kind of go through the project a bit. Like speak to the, like, why is the rhythmical like same time? Hey, every Monday at two, we've got our 30 minute GSR meeting. Like what's the, why is that so fundamental to this? Yeah, it's it's super fundamental because uh, the 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 robust ritualistic nature I think is is the piece that gets this individual that you're leading into the right mind space. So there's a huge right. difference between like I check in with this person on the job site as we sit on the tailgate and talk about it, versus a very focused meeting where they have to come in prepared before nine a.m. on Monday, so they can do it at the end of the day on Friday, or they can do it early Monday morning. But they were where they fill out this GSNR dashboard, which we'll certainly talk about with Dave here because it's that's a hugely important piece where they actually do reflection on the yeah. previous week, yeah. and they come in prepared, doing kind of like a first version of what they think their goals should be for the upcoming week. Um, so you're having them do some focus reflection, which is a huge part of the process. And then they know that it's a very focused, typically one hour meeting, sometimes half an hour, but often one hour, yeah. one on one. They have your full and undivided attention. Same thing the other way. And they know that the purpose of, of that hour every week is at the top of that hour, they're gonna come out with clearly defined goals for their upcoming week with an opportunity in there to work with their leader, their supervisor to where to, to help them problem solve the roadmap of how they're going to get there. Yeah. So it's a huge part of it. So you're going to get a lot of support and, and accountability is, is going to be held. I think what I, so what I really love about this conversation is, is this, like there's, um, you know, we know goal setting is so fundamental to high performance. You go to any, you know, any conference, there's going to be some guy on a stage talking about how important it is to set those goals and crush those goals. And any business guru is going to say the same thing. And you see, yeah. you read it in books and it's like, it's, it's yeah. a message that we're at least in this part of the world hammered over the head yeah. with. Like Do you want to accomplish your dreams? You're, you're going to be yeah. a loser if you don't have clear goals set for yourself. And I agree with that, but rarely, if ever, does the conversation go to like, Okay, cool. I, I, I wrote the goal on the whiteboard and I know what I want. There's this huge uh, chasm that needs to be crossed between where you are and where you want to go. And GSR is like the 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 week to week sort of like check in that that helps you keep on track, allows you to course correct if you're if you, you know, veer off. Um, and I think it's refreshing because it's, you know, yeah, we get it. You, you got to set goals and you got to visualize and you got to do all that stuff. This is a little bit more like what to do between. Totally. Because there's huge mechanics in between those, right? In that chasm sit a lot of mechanics that need to be worked, uh, need yeah. to be set up and worked every week, right? Because it's also not you, like you're not a solo realtor that's like, hey, well, I want to sell this many houses. I'm going to go do it. Like you're operating through a pretty serious organizational yeah. structure where you need that whole mechanism to work to be able to achieve in, goals yeah, long term. In, in harmony. So D Dave, I really want to um, get back to you here because we know that you do these at an extremely high level. Um, you're tracking a lot of data. You're having really, really impactful conversations with, with your team. Can you just kind of take us through your process a bit? Yeah. 
Um, you, you know, I love your whole conversation about goals and trying to get to the end of that goal. And, and, and you referred to it as kind of that middle ground, you know, and to me, that's exactly what the GSR is. It's the middle ground. Mm -hmm. And what the GSR is, is actually the action items of how we can go from visualizing or writing that goal down, whatever it might be, through the GSR, which is your action items, to your end result. And if you're actually holding these properly and you're holding your team accountable, it's trackable and it's measurable and you can have, see consistent movement along the way, along those 52 weeks, as Igor suggested. But they're truly a game changer if you're operating uh, 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 with GSRs at a very high level. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of just my plug for BTA, I guess. I think it's amazing. Uh, I want to thank you guys immensely for introducing uh GSRs to my company and Paul, who's our coach, is my second plug. That guy's a rock star, by the way. Uh, really appreciate everything he's done for our company and uh, our team. But our GSRs, uh, I hold them uh, once a week, every week, same time, same place, same schedule with every single one of my project managers, my manager of interior design and, my, and our controller, my financial manager. And we review essentially uh, their entire... Uh, job from start to finish in relation to their deliverables or roles or responsibilities. Um, and uh, we get down to the bottom, which uh, me and Paul created a, a very clear point based system that uh, is very black and white. You are either performing uh, at a high level that we've agreed uh, where the bar would be. Like these aren't just stuff that I make up. I yeah. sit down with each one of uh, our project managers and and we set the bar for where, you know, where's the bar in relation to the expectations of this company. So, so that's a, that's a real kind of high level overview. I can get into more detail if you want. Yeah, I, I would. Let's use, um, let's use the project manager role and, and the meetings that you have with them as an example. What sort of stuff are you talking about? What sort of data are they, are they reporting back to you on? Do you go through a checklist? Do you look at a dashboard? I mean, just, just kind of take us into that world a little. Yeah, absolutely. So, so essentially, uh, w w what me and Paul built out uh, is, is a, a Google Sheet. And it starts with uh, what the deliverables are, which is straight out of uh, BTA's GSR. Uh, uh, the dates and the financial deliverables. Then it gets into the principles of project management and what are they at a real high level. Yeah. Uh, we look at billable versus unbillable hours. I want to know exactly where you sit uh, in relation to you know what's been invoiced to a client. And then we do a bit of a check-in. Um, so I want to know how my project managers are doing and what I can do to support them. So that's kind of where we start out. And it's about, again, about building a relationship, making sure that I sure that they understand that uh, I'm here to support them in, in whatever uh, growth path they're on and, and that they feel heard and, and supported. And then we literally break down every single job that they're running. So for us, a project manager is going to run anywhere from, from two on the low end, maybe up to four or five projects at a time, depending on their skill sets and their abilities. And we take, we, we've taken right out of Builder Trend uh, all the numbers that are important to project management principles, and we put them right into the, our GSR. And we look at items uh, like, what's the gross profit on this project? What's the percentage of completion? What's the project schedule and are we on schedule? Uh, what's our material procurement look like? And are we communicating with our trade partners? Two months, one month, one week, three weeks, one day out. Uh, are all of the city and engineering inspections uploaded uh, into our software? What does our lead of homes labor uh, look like in relation to the percentage of completion and where are we tracking? So the idea there is to project it forward to make sure we don't have any major issues with that. And then we, of course, get into some of our to-dos and our quality control checklists. And has, has any of that turned red? And what happens is our project manager goes through that entire process for every job and they write out uh, in the GSR where that sits and if it's complete or not. And then I go through uh, all of that and make sure that I understand exactly where it sits. Now, 
if I have a project manager who's very dialed in, some weeks I may not even have to look into it. If I have a project manager that's really struggling, I have to do a much more deep dive to make sure that he is actually getting that done and he understands what is expected of him. So that's kind of the first part. And then the next part, we do a real kind of serious deep dive into all of the Lido Homes labor, which is our in-house carpenters. Uh, we're a team of 26 people overall. So of course, there's a, there's a lot of, of hours that go into a project. So mm -hmm. we'll track uh, what we expected the hours to be, where the budgets are um, <clears throat> presently, and then project it forward based on our hourly charge out rate. And if it looks like we're going to project out, we look start considering change work orders or reducing hours or, or whatever we do. But the point is we're, we're projecting forward on where we're going to be. And then the third part of that is what we call our, our weekly project manager update. And, and it is an update with a, that goes to our client that uh, gets cut and pasted into uh, uh, our, our builder trend and our, our clients get updated exactly where their project sits and that's that covers off uh, the entire schedule so we have a planned completion date a current uh, completion date and an actual completion date and we're constantly comparing those uh, what was worked on this week who did it and what occurred when we expect when it was completed what we expect to come up who did that work and when we expect to complete it and then a complete financial review we review the contract price, any change work totals, uh, where the selections are at, what's made, what's not made, what's over budget, what's under budget, what our job running total is, less payments made to us, and then of course, whatever our job running uh, balance is. And then we list out every single change work order and every purchase order that got attached to that. So uh, uh, it's clear to me when a purchase order goes out that that's an agreement or a contract with our trade partners. And then last but not least, any action items that might be discussed uh, with the client and our project manager uh, and, and any anything that needs to kind of get done moving forward. So every single job has that level of overview yeah. every week. <clears throat> Thorough, like extremely, extremely detailed. You're not rocking up to the meeting going like, well, so how, like how did um, how'd last week go? And they go, well, you know, good. And how do you think next week's going to go? Well, I think I hope pretty good also. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at a, a wide set of data. You're, um, I mean, I can't, I, I couldn't keep track of all this stuff, but it's, hey, has, you know, the city been communicated with? Do we have permits here? What's the gross profit margin on this project? When is our expected completion date? Have, have all the stakeholders been communicated with? You've got um, <clears throat> a very thorough, um, uh, like, sort of a, a procedure that you go through that makes sure nothing gets missed. And I suspect, you know, I've, I've heard you say this before, Coach Paul says this all the time as well, like most project managers in construction are professional firefighters. It's pretty safe to say like under this, under this system, which is very rigorous, not a lot of firefighting. There's no room for it. Like all this stuff gets caught way, way, way earlier. You can see further in advance. Um, and it's, it's a much more proactive way to run a business than just kind of running from thing to thing, feeling stressed out and behind. Um, I just want to highlight one really important point in, in what in what Dave said that I think isn't immediately apparent, but is crucial. So remember I said earlier in the construct of GSNR, the preparation by that individual you're leading, their prep is a hugely important part. And when you listen to Dave talk, and, and he's talking specifically about this preparation that each one of his project managers is doing coming in, if they are doing that, which in his case they are, they are by definition pretty dialed. Like you don't come into that meeting, not if you don't know all of that stuff, you're not going to be able to report it to Dave. So just by the definite by by the fact that they're able to come in with all of that stuff, is a very clear indicator that they've got control over their domain. And if they don't have control over it, they're not going to be able to come in with that set of information that's required to Dave summarize super well and that'll immediately be a red flag so just by the fact that they're that they're preparing for it at that level i think is super cool yeah you know I, I mean the points about are you a professional project manager are you a firefighter is so true and so accurate i mean i don't know what the percentages are you guys might know more than i do i know that you know i was there i know how frustrating it was yeah. i know how uh, how, how hard it was to 
to get uh, people on track and projects on track and keep happy clients. It's, I mean, construction is one of the hardest businesses there is out there. So what a GSR has really ultimately done for us uh, as a company and me is you're either doing your job or not. And I know right then, right now, whether you're focusing and you have the ability to do this job. Totally. I've had people, people come into my office after a length of GSR time and go, you know, I love these things. I can't do this. I'm going to have to resign. And, huh. you know, I, I reached across the table. I shook his hand and I said, you're a great human. I still like you. I still want to go have beers with you, but I appreciate you recognizing this. Good luck in your next uh, next company that you go to. Hopefully it's our competition. <laughs> and David, sorry, um, j- just to unpack that, it's, it's a really important point. And I know that we were talking about this uh, like like a week or two ago, and, and it's, it's such a cool point. I want to highlight it. So this is this is a person where like they recognize the rigor that's involved and the rigor to which you're holding. And they're basically just saying like, this is, I know this is really good. I just cannot do it at this standard week in, week out. Is that kind of the essence of it? I've had multiple people do that, you know, and some people are probably listening to this going, well, you know, yeah, it all sounds good, but I'm afraid if my whole team's going to quit. And that's, you know, I mean, I understand that and I understand the fear of that, but I also know that I would be a whole shit more scared of being sued and going to court and running a shitty project and having a major brand hit than I would of having a high standard and a high expectation. So, you know, pick a path either way. You're going to, you're going to live in the fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, um, what kind of like, have you have so a couple of people have maybe said, Hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to be able to, to cut it here. I'll, I'll see myself out. Have you had like some positive feedback from team members? Are there some of your, are there some of your project managers that go, Whoa, this is awesome. Like I feel totally in control. I feel supported by you. Everything's clean and clear. Like what, what is, uh, what is your team saying about this, this system? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's another great question. So, you know, the bottom line is every single project manager has said to me, this is amazing. Like, I, I, I know exactly what's expected of me. I know exactly how to be a professional project manager. You've made the road and the road map for me very clear. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Some haven't been able to hold the standard and, and, and stay at the bar that, ironically, they set for themselves So this is not something I just pulled out of the air. This is a bar that we all agreed to. Now, on the flip side of those guys that have walked out the door, we left in good terms. We've had a number of project managers who struggled um, and have now got to the bar and uh, are having tremendous success and are running great projects and and have been very successful uh, at, at managing projects and entering the, the world of, of being a, a craftsman or a professional uh, project manager versus a firefighter. Um, of course, being a policeman for 30 years, I wasn't real keen on firefighters. Just <laughs> but, uh, a bit of a rivalry. It's, it, it's something I really, uh, you know, I don't want in my business. I don't like chaos. I don't like firefighting. Mm-hmm. I like planning and I like projecting forward. And being a big visionary and, and thinking big, uh, I can I can create a lot of chaos, but I can dial it back in by holding this level of, of, of uh, accountability in our team uh, uh, as well. I'm sure your customers have noticed too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 something we talk about with our clients all yeah. the time because they're the ones getting the updates. They're the ones getting uh, that level of, of of management on their projects. So they cool. they love it as well. Yeah. Um, I got a I got a quick sure. question here. I just um, one thing that that I'd love to extrapolate on from one thing that Dave mentioned earlier is just the, the this point system and having this very like black and white approach to a scorecard of how that project manager or anyone in your business for that matter is doing. Um, can you unpack that for us a little bit more, Dave, of like, how do you get this uh, black and whiteness, for lack of a better term, into their, in, into being able to evaluate their results and how they're doing and, and how you've set up this point system to be able to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we kind of went over quickly, you know, every job that we review and how we go about it. And then we do that with every job, whether it's two to five, and then we get down to the bottom and we have a uh, we tie our performance bonus uh, for each project manager into a real black and white clear picture on whether they had success that week or didn't have success. 
So essentially what me and Paul did um, is we, we wrote out what do we need to do and what do our project managers need to do at a high level every single week and what do they need to be on top of to ensure that we're going to have a successful project at the end and, and have a happy client. And so we took all of those items that we talked about previously and we put them into a performance bonus uh, system and every line item gets five points. So if you have three projects and you have uh, no budgets over $500, then you would get five points for that. If you have one project that is over $500 in a budget line and two that, that aren't, you would get uh, you know one third of, of five points. And you add that up at the bottom and we take 90% of those points. So the bar has been set by the team at 90%. Mm. So, you know, it is really just them doing their job. And it's, it's nothing that's extreme. It's things like schedule, budget, uh, toolbox meetings, um, uh, you know, managing the lead of labor. Is your site clean and organized? Uh, you know, site safety. All of the things that a good project manager needs to do in order to manage his project, we made it black and white by putting it on paper and assigning a number to it and adding that number up. So they can get to the end of the week and do their own number yeah. and go, I had a great week. I, I met my expectations. Uh, I know I'm going to get my performance bonus and I've agreed to do these things. So uh, I, I know I've been successful this week. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's really, it's black and white. That's really cool. What are some of the common things where you find project managers are losing points? Like what, what are the things that you've got in that point matrix that you're sort of uh, that you're wanting to really discourage or have people not do? Uh, what are the behavior, behaviors you're trying to steer people away from? Um, and it's, so in other words, like where, like how can a project manager lose points and where do you, where, where do you see people losing points? Well, to be honest with you, uh, it, it just don't do your job and you're going to lose points. Um, and don't manage your schedule. You're going to lose points. Don't manage your budget. You're going to lose points. Don't have a clean, safe site. You're going to lose points. Don't do your quality control inspections. You're going to lose points. Don't do your project manager update to your client. You're going to lose points. Uh, so, so it, you know, I mean, it, it it's kind of crazy when I say it this way. Um, it's really simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, and, and that's my best analogy with it because it, it's just do your job, do it well, and we will have an amazing meeting. Don't do it, don't do your job well, and I'm going to know immediately, and you're gonna know, and the rest of the team is gonna know, because in our weekly team meeting, your points get posted. So, you know, it becomes very clear to the whole company, and, and we're very much transparent, who's succeeding and who's doing their job and who's doing it well and who isn't. So, you know, then comes the, the approach of, well, let's, let's provide some coaching and mentoring time. Okay. We're not meeting the bar. Why? Yeah. What do you, what areas do you need work on? Who's doing that really well? Let's get you some coaching. Let's spend some time. And we discuss that in our GSR meeting. And then it's don't bloody well come back here next week and not have it done. <laughs> now I say that a little bit, uh, you know, uh, sarcastically, but, but it, that's really the truth. Yeah. Hmm. Right? I mean, Pe people play better when you're keeping score, you know what I mean? And, and that, that yeah. point system is a, is a really great way of taking them from the practice field to like, no, the, the lights are on this. It's, it's game time. And, and this stuff matters. I think that that's, um, an incredibly important point. And, and certainly, um, like you're, you're doing this at a very, very, very elite level. I, I want to, um, make a couple comments here for listeners if you want to like take a stab at this you want to maybe have a look at a a, a simple um version of, of what dave is talking about we've included there's a link in the description there's two templates two gsr dashboard templates that you can download um they're sort of a fill in the blanks you'll find it pretty intuitive if you've listened along to this to this episode carefully you'll see um, a lot of the parallels between what dave is talking about in this template that we're that we're providing for you. Um, I would really encourage if you're feeling in your business like, hey, 
the line of accountability is a little looser than I'd like it to be. I'd really like to start looking at ways to tighten this up. If you spend 15 minutes plugging some numbers in and playing out, playing around with these spreadsheets, you're going to see, I, I promise you'll have a light bulb moment. You'll go, oh, this is exactly what I'm missing. Now, the other thing I'll just mention, we've, we spent a lot of time talking about how Dave does this with his his project managers, but you as a business leader could and should be doing this with many different roles. So, um, you know, for Dave, he's got an interior designer, he's got he's got a he's got a controller. Like the results, the dashboard, the the conversation, what you're talking about might be a little bit different, but the overarching structure is going to be the same, which is you in your position have a predetermined goal that we talked about together. We're aligned. We, we we're, we're both in agreement that this is the target, and we have a you know a certain period of time to get there and week to week we need to check in to make sure that you're on track and if you're off we have the coaching the mentoring the support systems needed to get you back on and if that doesn't work you know probably at some point there's the door but this anyway this this system is yours uh listeners to download play around with it have a look i think you'll find it uh super super insightful i wanted to go back to something you said a second ago and and ask a follow-up question which is from time to time um you know, people miss the mark. You'll have a project manager whose whose job has gone way over budget. You'll have a customer that feels like they haven't been communicated with enough. You'll have a whole, I mean, you know, like you said a second ago, construction's a really hard gig. Uh, there's stuff that goes wrong. There are, there are moments when you need to um, <clears throat> make a correction. So I want to ask you, because I know you've done a lot of them, uh, when someone on your team is underperforming, how do you approach those conversations as a leader? How do you approach those conversations so that the point gets communicated, which is, hey, listen, listen, this is the line. We talked about this. I need you to be here and, and you're over here. How do you get that point across while leaving that person whole and still feeling still feeling supported so that it doesn't erupt into a blowout, which I know is what probably some listeners are worried will happen. So maybe just unpack that for us. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, outside of BTA, which has had a tremendous impact in my company, two other major kind of players that have really uh, shaped uh, how I how I run our company. One of them uh, is a speaker that you guys had, I think, at the winter summit or one of the summits was Jocko Willock, uh, Extreme Ownership. I, I can't tell you enough how amazing that book is and, and has absolutely shaped my life. And the simple idea that everything that goes wrong in my business, my life, call it whatever you want, is ultimately my fault. So, so I approach these meetings from a perspective of, okay, we have an issue here. What, what I, I apologize to you for not having explained this properly. So let's review what my expectations are. So I always start with full ownership on me. So if a project manager is not doing well, I take full ownership on that. Right. Another area that's had a massive impact on our company is a book called How to Be a Great Boss. And that book really outlines um, um, the fact that being direct, honest, and respectful with somebody, you were actually just trying to help them versus being confrontational. It took me a while to get over that concept of, you know, if, you know, if I just come across as, as a guy who's constantly hammering people, it's going to destroy my, my relationship with those people. And I care deeply about relationships. So, so to come at it from a perspective of, I care so much about you that I want to be honest and direct with you and try to help you so you can have success. And that's what those two books have really done for me as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a business leader and as an owner of a company and as actually just every part of my life. So, so, so just to recap that, because I know I've been going on about that, I, I approach every conversation from I care deeply about you. And I don't just say that. I mean it. Yeah. My team knows I care about them. I care about them personally. I care about their family. I care about their success in life. And secondly, I start with, you're struggling and it's my fault. So what can I do to help you? What haven't I explained to you? So, so when I come at it from that angle, and I, and I truly believe those things and mean them, it takes the barrier down in yeah. those conversations and, 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 and it lowers it to a point of, you know, Dave really cares about me and he really wants me to have success. And I've agreed to do these things. So I, so, so we better start doing them. That's a um, very different approach from, Hey, get into my office here. I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to cut you down and lambaste you here for an hour. Cause you're an idiot. And this job has gone sideways. 
Um, <laughs> that's that's not how you walk up to these conversations, and I'm sure it makes it. You know, nobody loves to have these conversations, but I'm sure it makes it um, more approachable for you, and and certainly for the for the employee. Absolutely, you know. I mean, at the end of the day. Everyone makes mistakes. We all do. I do. We all do. Uh, everyone that works for us makes mistakes. The point is, is do are we learning from those and are we growing and are we coming at it from a perspective of, I care enough about you that I want you to have success. And that's just a key factor. This focus on, on care for people and development of people is, is interesting because I think that a, almost everybody listening to this will agree and say, yes, that is important. Um, but a lot of people don't actually implement that effectively. And, and I think one of the big reasons is, is like you have to actually be able to know what is happening in your organization if you're going to be able to support people in the areas that aren't doing well. So like I said, everyone can, can agree that that's a good thing, but I think that a huge reason why people don't do it, leaders don't do it, business owners in our industry don't do this is because they're not actually aware even to begin with where things are going wrong. The visibility, Benji, you talk about like the concept of not being in tune. I think a lot of business owners aren't actually in tune with what is and isn't going on Mm -hmm. across all their different job sites, all elements of their business. And I just want to highlight that that's such a cool element of Dave's GSNR system because it gives him the feedback, the feedback and the visibility and the understanding so that he can yeah. go and have those kind of supportive conversations. Because even if he was the good hearted individual that he is, where he wants to support people, if he doesn't have the visibility, he doesn't have the mechanics to actually go and diagnose to be able to do yeah. that. Right. So that, that's really cool. And, and you talk about the sports analogy, right? Like the, the, the points are the points, the scores, the score. I love the simplicity of it. I think Dave says it was. It's not easy. It's actually very difficult to implement. But conceptually, it's simple. It's like, how many turnovers did you have on this game? Yeah, totally. Right. If you've not sent the client the update by the end of the week, you clearly didn't have your shit together at some level either. You didn't know what's going on enough to be able to send it to them, or you just missed on sending it. But either way, you fumbled the ball and it's turned over. Totally. So you're losing a point. Right. And it's the same thing. It's like, if you, are your safety plans not up to where they should be? Is your budget not in control? Yeah. You've lost the ball. Yeah. 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 And you know, that's so true uh, in everything we do. And you know, the other thing that I probably want to mention here is that there is a ton of flexibility in these things. So, for example, you know, uh, some of my project managers, uh, the measurable is to have it done by Friday at six. And it's either done or not done. Like, there's no. There's no gray area. It's either done or not done. And some of them say, well, I'd like to have it at six o'clock on Sunday. Like, I don't really care right. what day you get it done. All I care is that you you align with my core value and our company's core value of you do what you say you're going to do. And that means by six o'clock on Sunday or six o'clock on Friday or two o'clock in the morning, I don't care. But it's written down and you do what you say you're going to do. And it's done or not done, black and white. But there's enough flexibility in there where I can say, look, I want to work with you to make this work. Tell me the date. Tell me the time. If you need to change it and alter it, we'll change it and alter it. But for this week, was it done? Yes or no? Um, I want to, uh, this has just been an, an awesome conversation and, and packed with with gold nuggets. I want to end on this question Dave, there's there's definitely someone like driving around in their vehicle right now or, or listening to this this podcast on a run going, ah, you know, he's right. I know I need to do this. Um, this is speaking to me because my project managers are kind of all over the place. And my, you know, my, my team, there's a lot of gray areas in my business and I can't really see what's going on. Um, but they're they're nervous to implement this because a you know you got to step up to the plate and be the leader like have those critical conversations and and the other thing is like this is work you got to put this stuff together it takes planning it takes implementation so for someone for that someone in that situation they're listening to this podcast going yeah I need to do this but I'm a I'm a bit scared to start what would you just say broadly speaking to that person well I mean I think it kind of goes back to something that we either touched on Um, You can either manage your project managers uh, proactively or you can manage them in court by making sure that you show up because your project is a shit show. I mean, my my advice is pick a path. Uh, 
the bottom line is, is that if you're not managing uh, your projects and you're not holding your project managers accountable to a standard, now whatever that standard is, is decided by you and your team, um, you know, you're going to have projects go sideways. And I'm not suggesting that my projects are perfect because they're not. Uh, you know, we still have uh, stuff we're working on and sorting out, but we have a whole lot less now because of GSRs and, and our direct report meetings with our project managers than we had even a short while ago. It's amazing. Let's, uh, let's leave it at that, Dave. I really, really appreciate you doing this with us. Our listeners will too. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll have you back at some point to talk about something <laughs> else, but thank you so much for your time today. No, awesome. Thanks for having me. Hey, if you enjoyed this show, hit that subscribe button. It's what allows us to produce more awesome content for you totally for free.